Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for something completely new on my channel. Over the next couple of weeks we're gonna launch a couple of mini series about creating, designing and 3D printing my own stuff. Now for this first project I actually went uh, maybe a little bit overboard, I don't know, but what I want to do is create a battleship game that I can actually print out on my 3D printer and we're gonna have a couple of episodes about that. In the first episode we're gonna, you know, design the lower part of the box, then probably the upper part and maybe the ships. We have to design the pins and, you know, we have to do everything. Now this idea of course has already been done, but I kind of thought we, we could go through this process together. I'm not the kind of guy that just wants to download something and then print it out. I actually do want to create my own stuff, even if it has been created before. It's just more satisfactory this way. Now, as you can see, I've chosen the program Tinkercad in order to do that, because it seems as though the 3D printing community has decided on this program as the best free program in order to create simple stuff for 3D prints. Now, the battleship game. I'm not sure if you know about it. I'm gonna post a picture right now so you, you know, maybe get reminded. If it isn't called battleship, uh, let me actually know what it is called in English. I'm not so sure. I just know in Swiss German it's called Schiffli Frisanka. So that's the title of our project. But without any further ado, let's just get this started. Now I'm using this program since yesterday, so this is not necessarily a tutorial. We are just gonna go through the designing process together and I'm gonna try to make this as interesting as possible through the magic of editing. So we are gonna start with the lower part of the box and if we look at the bottom right here, I'm so sorry everything is in German, don't know how to change it, but this is the snap point. We have it set to one millimeter. So if I hover over this we can see at the moment our box is approximately 136 millimeters by 82. Well approximately, it's actually exactly that length. So that is good to know for the beginning, however I first want to kind of figure out my dimensions. So maybe let's do this mathematically. I do want to leave about two millimeters of space free for each edge. The reason I want to do that is because my 3D printer that I have at the moment is printing in 0.4 millimeter thickness. So that means I have to choose a width for the border that can be divided by 0.4 millimeters. And 2 millimeters just so happens to be one of those numbers. So let's go ahead and pick up one of those. And I'm gonna make sure that I place it at the 2 millimeter mark. I think, yeah, that was correct right there. But this one here is a hollow guy. Now, a cool thing about this program is that you can actually combine objects. So for instance, I could select this full body and then this hollow body. And then we're just gonna group them together like so. And now you can see it actually combined the two objects. No problemo. However, this is not what I want to do right now because we will have to change the dimensions of this. So at the moment this has the same height as the box and I think the box itself, if I look at my measurements here, could be approximately 30 millimeters in height. Now what I want this area to be is basically the place for the pins that you use to mark whatever ships you hit or didn't hit. So the white and red pins, I think they are in the original game. That means we're gonna increase that to the height we actually need, which is 30. I'm going to bring this all the way down and then I'm actually gonna go back up 2 millimeters. So that means theoretically we should have a 2 millimeter floor as well. I think I want to go approximately 5 centimeters into that direction. This might actually be too much, we will have to see. And then downwards we will have to go quite a bit. You know, thinking about it, oh wow, we need like 11 fields. We now need to lay out a grid which I think is 11 by 11. If we take the numbers 1 to 10 and then A to... what is that? H or so? I don't know. We will see. So what I should be able to do is place this hollow guy and we're gonna scale it down all the way to approximately 1 centimeter. Let me see. Oh, I'm confused here. There we go. 1 centimeter by 1 centimeter by 1 centimeter. Or actually, let's make it a little flatter. We're just gonna go half a centimeter. Then we need to bring this all the way up and over. And let me actually make the placement right here. Okay, there we go. That looks about right. We have another two millimeters right here and here as well. I'm gonna make it two millimeters higher so that I can shove it down. 
and still have easy access to it. Otherwise, it's going to be difficult to click it if it is directly in the surface. But there we go, that is going to be our first field and theoretically we should have the space for 11 fields by 11 fields. So we might have to make this a little bit smaller, you know, I only have a printing area of 20 by 20 by 20 centimeters. So let's actually go ahead, click that bad boy and then control D, which is going to duplicate in place. And that means I can just drag this over. And a cool feature about this program is now, since I've done this action by hitting control D over and over again, it's just going to copy it over for me. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11. Wow, that is going to be a humongous board, but we are definitely below 20 centimeters, so that's good. I'm gonna make sure that I have a 2 millimeter thick edge here as well. Then we're gonna shift click all of these guys and we're going to copy them over again. Control D and then I can just bring them down. Let me see, that's 1, 2 millimeters. Okay, yeah, I think this worked out. So Control D again. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Oh yeah, it's coming along. Let's go ahead and grab this bad boy. I'm going to bring it all the way to where it needs to be, right there. Cool, so this could be the dimensions of our board. What do you think? What do you think about that? Okay, now actually thinking about it, we might want to switch a few things around. I'm just going to select everything, but we're going to deselect this guy and this guy so that I can just drag these guys over. Because now that we know our dimensions, what I could do is something completely different. I'm going to place another one of these hollow guys right there and I want to make sure that I have uh, the appropriate size. We want to cut out about, let's do 10 millimeters. Now we're gonna bring this right here and now we could already do a grouping. We're gonna group these three guys together so that we get the cutouts. Yeah, I like that. So here you can store your pieces and here is where we place all of these guys again. But we're going to make them normal bodies so that I can place them. Let me see, this needs to be perfect. Okay, looking good. Now I can get these back down. I think I want them to go right here. This is looking nice. Yeah, what do you think? I think we should try to combine everything and see what happens. Oh, something, something happened that I didn't want. Ah, ah, okay, okay, it was just calculating. Okay, I see. Wow, that's actually not too shabby. I kind of like it. However, I would like it to be multicolored, to be honest with you. So I think what we're gonna do is select this guy and we're gonna make it blue. Then we're gonna select everything else and those are gonna be black. Oh yeah. Cool, time to combine everything again and then we can uh, continue by poking in the holes for the pins. There we go. Now, one thing we should actually do is hit the multi-color checkmark right there. And now we can see our actual colors. Okay, let's go ahead and pick a cylinder. Let's see. I want to probably not place that there. That was a bad idea. But there we go. We want to make this, let's say, 8 or so. 8 by 8. Actually, if we press shift, then we can scale it all together. That is good to know. So I'm gonna have this guy right here. It needs to be perfectly centered once again and I think that is what we have no ah, I need to add 0.5 millimeters as my snap guide right now there we go okay anyways how large do we want to make these at the moment it's five millimeters in length I think that's actually not too bad I'm gonna increase that by approximately one millimeter so that I can let a little bit stick out here there we go and now we need to do the same as before we're gonna copy this over Control D and then you're gonna come right here. Are you centered? I think so. If it is, it should be working out just copying this over and over. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna be right back once I've done that for everything. And there we go. I think we are actually done. What I should be able to do is select everything and then group it together. And what we should be seeing is all the holes we need. There we go. We got it. Look at that. It is absolutely amazing. Wow, I actually like this program a lot right now. So this is going to be our battleship field. Now in order to bring this lower part of the design to an actual finish, we of course need to create a hinge mechanism of some sorts. 
Now, how could we do this? I would like to strengthen the backside a little bit of this project. So maybe we can come up with, let me see, one of those. No, actually one of those. I think, yeah, that's what I need. We're going to rotate this around. If you look at it from the right angle, you can do that. And if you hit shift, it's going to rotate in 45 degrees steps. Okay, I would like this to be placed right here, exactly on the top, there we go. And looking at the edge right here, this is a perfect 45 degree angle, which means I can still print it out. I cannot go extremer than that, and I would like to print everything without support, if possible. And I just realized something. Yeah, right here, of course, we should have the letters on the top row and then here the numbers. Or maybe this vice versa, I'm actually not sure. I'm gonna do the numbers on the top and the letters downwards, just because, you know, that's how my brain works. Why didn't you guys tell me? Oh man, now I have to fix this somehow. Maybe we can ungroup this. You know, if we are lucky, we can do that. And oh man, okay. Okay, it kind of worked. Because now all I have to do is get rid of this upper row before combining all of these objects. Okay, there we go. It actually worked out. But one thing that kind of still bothers me is the height. And I wonder if I just shrink this all down. Will this affect much? Yeah, I think it actually did. It also made the holes a little bit smaller, so that is a problem. But I think this size would be more appropriate. This just looks better. So let me try to fix that as well. We're gonna go back to 30 millimeters for now and ungroup everything again. And I'm gonna be back once I fixed it without influencing the actual holes and the pins. These need to be perfect and I don't want to scale them down. Well, 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 so after giving it some thought, I decided to go with 30 millimeters because I looked at my tape measure here and I saw that two centimeters are nothing. It's nothing. What we can do is actually copy this and make the cover as well, because of course you need a field where you have your own ships and then you need a field to represent the enemy situation. So we could copy this over and just make the cover a lot smaller. So all of the pins are gonna be stored in here and the cover is not gonna give additional slots. However, we will have some free space on the cover to do, I don't know, something else. So give me ideas. As you can already see, I've added a couple of letters and I actually already grouped this up. I decided to show you that with the numbers. So we should be able to find numbers somewhere. Actually, are they here? Yeah, there we go. They are in the same category. So I'm gonna place all the numbers we need, which is all the way up to 10. Is there a 10 even? No, there's no 10. Ah, oh, man, we will have to make it ourselves. Or we could start with zero. Yeah, maybe that is a better idea. Otherwise, the number 10 would be awkwardly small. Okay, so first of all, I want to make sure all of these guys are exactly 10 by 10, or approximately exactly. However, I just saw that those guys are being awfully distorted. So maybe we use the shift button when we are doing that and we just make sure that it fits approximately into the 10 millimeter field. So let me quickly rinse and repeat that for all the numbers. Very well, let's start with the number zero. I want to bring this up 27.5 millimeters and I also want to shrink it down to two millimeters. There we go, the thickness. Then we're gonna bring this on top of the first field. I want to make sure that we align it properly and then I'm gonna go in approximately one millimeter on either side, align it towards the center and there we go. That looks absolutely perfect also from this angle. Let's do the same thing with number one, 27.5 millimeters up. I want to shrink it down to two millimeters and then bring it right here, shrink it down a little bit more. There we go, that looks about right. Okay, let me rinse and repeat that for all of the numbers and then we should be done at least with this part of the game. I'm not so sure, I mean, maybe we are gonna make some additions. One thing we could think about is maybe make the encasement a little bit thicker than two millimeters. Is there an easy way to achieve that? I'm not so sure. Do I have to add stuff? It would be great if I could, you know, choose this polygon and just make it bigger. But we might have to do some trickery. Anyways, let me finish the numbers. Okay, there we go. We are ready. I think we can now combine all of these things. And by the way, I'm not going to print it out in those colors. I'm gonna print it out in one single color. These colors are just to have a better view in the program. Afterwards, I will probably end up painting it. Good, so now this is all one thing. I love it, this is great. 
I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this over and duplicate it for the upper part. We're gonna make it a little bit more narrow so that it is a better cover. And in the second episode, we're going to design the hinge mechanism. I think then we can thematically divide this a little bit better up across the episodes. So now before we continue, I wonder, is there a way to make this wall a little bit thicker? I'm gonna check if we could, for instance, just add another cube, you know? So let's say instead of 2 millimeters, we're gonna do 6. So that means we're gonna have to add an additional 4 millimeters. Okay, hopefully this way we will be able to make this a little bit better. Now, how come it has become this large again? I wanted you to be 4 millimeters. There we go. Great, so if we made this the same color, uh, what was it? Huh, that's curious. I cannot seem to find the ex- Ah, that was because it was selected. Oh man, <laughs> this was so confusing to me. Okay, we do have the right color. So if we combine these two things, then we should be good. You know, we should have a thicker border. And that's what I'm gonna do for all of the borders. And after that, we're gonna copy it over in order to create the cover. Ah, look at that. It even does it seamlessly. That's absolutely amazing. I'll be right back. And here we have it, the first draft of our little game. It's 194 millimeters, so that's really close to my printing limits. But in theory, that should still work. However, we couldn't make a brim or anything. If we print this in PLA plastic, then it might just work out. Okay, for now, let's uh, control D this bad boy. And we're gonna bring one of those units over and we need to kind of flip it around. Let's do 90 degrees for the time being so we can work with ease. And I'm gonna bring it up to the 30 millimeters mark because that's probably where it needs to go. Okay, so that is how it's gonna look like at the moment. What I still want to change is this area. I can do something completely different here because it's not gonna be used as a compartment. So let me know if you have any ideas. Until then, we're gonna click this bad boy and then we're gonna try to ungroup it. Yeah, we can see it uh, kind of collapsing into all of its components. Let's actually see. I'm probably gonna have to ungroup this even further. Yeah, it looks like. Oh man, oh man, hopefully this is gonna go well. Okay, nice. I think I ungrouped completely everything. Let's try to select this bad boy. And we want to make this thinner. Now, let's see. I want to make this approximately uh, 15 millimeters or so. Let's go 16. I think this is a better number. And then we have to select this bad boy. And this bad boy has to be what? Also 16. And that would mean we still have a 2 millimeter cover over there. Good. Let's grab all of these guys and do the same thing. Okay, if everything went okay, what we should be able to do is select all of these components, group them together in order to get our initial holes. Hmm, I get the feeling that didn't work. <laughs> okay, there we go. I just selected the wrong units before, but now we got it back. And that means we're gonna select uh, completely everything except the lower part and group it up again. And it should work, please. Oh my gosh, I think it actually worked. Yeah, check this out. It's beautiful. Okay, I think with that out of the way, we can wrap it up. What we still need to install, of course, are the hinges. And then we need to have like a, a locking mechanism or so. We need to have something for here. Even if it is just, you know, of a decorative nature, I do not mind. Give me your suggestions. And then I guess once we are sure that our design is working, we are gonna print it out. It's gonna take a long time to print out something this size, but you know, it might be worth it. I will not guarantee too much. Maybe we end up designing something smaller first to print out. I'm not sure, but this is the new type of series that I want to have at least for the next while on my channel, as long as I still have access to a 3D printer. I kind of want to include that aspect on my channel as well. So thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great time and hopefully I'm going to catch you in the next episode. Let me know what you thought. Have a great time and see you soon. Bye bye.